according to the Humane Society of the United States, uh, there are currently millions of feral cats that are living outside uh, in, in the United States. Millions of cats. I mean, that just, just to give you an idea of how huge the problem is, um, it, it's, it's everywhere. It's not just in the United States, it's in other countries. Uh, it's pretty much a problem in every community. Uh, I am nomadic being in college and I move around a lot and everywhere I go, my work is needed because there's always a feral cat in need no matter where I go. Um, maybe not as bad up north it is, is, it is down south, but, um, but definitely a significant problem and um, we're in need of some solutions for that. So now the next thing is we also have different training phases that we're looking at. And so of those different um, as conditions I told you about being able to approach the cage, being able to open the cage door, well, we're breaking those down even smaller because this is shaping and uh, what shaping is is taking this big behavior of what you want and then breaking it down into these more manageable, smaller behaviors. So, um, so approaching the cage, I'm not just approaching the cage and not paying attention. I actually have it broken down into these squares that I have on the floor here and I use very fancy material. It requires that you print out a piece of paper and put a number on it. Um, and you can print out as many of them as you want. They're just the distance of the room. Uh, so my rooms always happen to be 14 squares long. So if I had a, and the problem is I have to print out more of these numbers because the room's bigger this time. Um, but you use those squares to be able to tell where you're at. So, and I'll, I'll kind of show you how that works. So, you know, I may be able to approach the kitten to square nine and I'm shooting now to approach to square ten. Okay. I'd like to show you a few supplies that you're going to need. Um, before you ever bring home the feral kitten, um, it's always good to have as many safety supplies on hand as possible. So this is a feral handling system that I have. So when I go to the shelter to get the fearful or feral cat, uh, I bring this with me and um, it makes it a lot easier when you're trying to get the cat out of the cage. Uh, the beauty is it has the front door that will slide straight up so you can actually put that inside a, a vet cage or whatever kind of cage your cat's in and kind of smush them against the back of the cage and then close them in there so that at no point you actually have to handle the cat um, because obviously they're scared and you're putting yourself at risk of possibly getting bit. So once you have the cat in the carrier, um, it's best if you've planned ahead and already have a vet appointment set up where you can take the cat straight to the vet and get them spayed or neutered and rabies vac vaccinated. Um, uh, maybe they're already done before you pick them up, but just in case. And this will make it easy for the vet to be able to handle the feral cat also uh, because they can slide the cat down and actually give them an injection through the hole in the back of the, the carrier. And you want to get all the unhappy stuff out of the way to start with um, because once you actually start working with a cat, you want good things to happen. You don't want to have to go scoop them up and take them and have them poked and, and uh, spayed. So, so this is a very handy tool. I'm a big promoter of safety. Um, so once you're able to approach a kitten and he's only offering desirable behaviors, well you're going to do the, the same thing that you did before. You're going to break out your handy dandy little brush on a stick and then you're going to start showing that. Here's, let me go get my brush in case y'all are visual people and want to actually see my little brush. Um, I can actually approach my kitten. Don't push your kitten with the brush. Uh, I, I'm able to approach him and now I, I'm presenting the brush. No big deal? Okay, I'm leaving. I wait 15 to 30 seconds, you know, I come back in the room. It's like, oh yeah, how are you still good with the brush? You like that? And it goes much quicker because we've already been through this. They've played this game, they know how it works. Um, and so then you usually get more relaxed be behavior much more quickly. The cat's like, oh, I get it. Okay, get me here, pet me there, all is well. Um, same thing. I don't immediately jump into the petting. Um, you know, I'm go through the steps again. Maybe it only takes a few times of brushing. Great, we're okay with petting, you're comfortable with that. Good. Um, so now you've got a cat that you're actually able to approach. Okay, so we're gonna be, we're ready to begin. So Angie is going to do the first trial, baseline, just to see how close she can get to the cat. 
uh, before he makes a big reaction. He's already, as you can see, the cat is already a little bit of a statue, and but that's where we're gonna begin. So we'll see how he does when Angie approaches. So okay, Angie, you can begin approaching. Yes, his eyes were open, yeah, uh, wide. See, he's not accepting that brushing away, but he's still fine, he's just tolerating. <laughs> We're done, that's okay. Now this is okay, so actually this can be real, a little helpful for us because we can begin pretty far into the procedure. 